Yo, what's really good people? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the top movers and fallers. We're going to talk about doubling your money with one stock. And we're going to talk about the bleak market outlook that I can see at the moment. So if you want to know all of that plus more, like, comment, subscribe, help the channel get to 6k subscribers. Follow on Instagram at Infant Investors. And if you are new to investing and you're wondering what app am I using, I'm currently using the free trade application. My link will be in the description and the pinned comment, freetrade.io forward slash infant hyphen investors. Click the link, sign up, deposit one pound, and you will get a free share of up to 200 pounds. But let's begin straight away with the top movers. Now, the first top mover to speak of, or incidentally not really speak of, is Barrett Development. So Barrett Development in the last seven days has gone up 12.3%. And the reason why I said not to speak of is not really any information to speak of that's notable. I think, you know, what we're seeing in this current climate is that because stocks were so depressed, you know, stocks are making a significant bounce back just because they're going back to potentially the intrinsic value or the panic is a little bit over or institutions are moving their money, but there's no real headlines or anything changing with the actual business at the current moment um, with a lot of businesses. That's what I'm personally finding at the moment. And, and maybe some of you guys are finding that as well. So yeah, no real news with Barrett, but it has gone up 12.3% this week. The second one is Taylor Wimpy, obviously within the same sector. And actually, there is some news. Taylor Wimpy will be reopening sites from the 4th of May. So they've announced that they're going to reopen some of their construction sites. Obviously, that means they're going to be continuing to build, you know, launching more properties, selling more properties, um, even filling up their order book um, and potentially getting revenue back into the business. So I think investors have seen this as a positive sign. Both Barrett and Taylor Wimpy did suspend dividends up until, you know, October, November, depending on what's going on. So investors are probably seeing this as, you know, a good opportunity to potentially buy in. And I think that's why Taylor Wimpy has gone up 16.62% this week. The third one to speak of this week and the biggest top mover, as you can see right here, second in my portfolio now, is Sentiment. Sentiment's gone up a staggering 21.28%. Actually, when I checked last night, it was 27%. So I think... Um, when when there's probably been some clearing in overnight trading or something that is now 21.28 percent but either way um it's been the top mover this week which is which is really good and there's a few actual things that's happened with sentiment so the first thing is that they've declared a dividend so that sentiment have declared a dividend and that's going to be just shy of 5p a share the dividends at the moment for you know particularly uk investors are gold mine no pun intended so you know anytime a company is declaring dividends i'm seeing a lot of people just flock to that stock both institutions and retail investors in order to actually get some form of a return in may june or whenever that time is so it's going extive on the 30th of april so the end of next week sentiment will be going extive and it will pay that dividend a confirmed declared dividend um in the 15th of May, I believe. So yeah, a couple of weeks later, um, during the middle of May. Now, um, also a good thing about sentiment is they've actually announced that they don't believe they were hit really um, with the coronavirus pandemic. And what I mean by that is their employees, their staff, their production, um, everything kind of ran smoothly, you know, was status quo and ran on track. So that's obviously potentially good news for when they do their next earnings announcement as well. So yeah, I'm seeing that a lot of gold has gone up. Greatland Gold, incidentally, which I'm going to go down to, was on my watch list. And you guys saw it was on my watch list maybe a couple of weeks ago. I didn't pull the plug um, and I'm not going to try and sit there and say, you know what, I, I wanted to pull the plug, but I just wanted to kind of monitor it. And you can see over the last month, it's gone up like nearly 100% in the last seven days, it's gone up 20% as well. So I do think that there is a kind of bullish sentiment with mining stocks at the moment, uh, particularly gold mining stocks. And that's something that I'm, I'm trying to look into to see if, if I can find a pattern or trend. Maybe it's over, maybe it's going to start falling next week, who knows. But yeah, sentiment has done well. I had a look at some old stocks that I used to own, which was the Gold Producers ETF that done well as well this week. So yeah, gold mining across the board seems to be um, doing particularly well. So if you guys do hold some gold mining stocks, I will not be surprised if you guys say, yeah, I, I'm having a good performance. Now, in terms of the top 
fallers the first one to speak of or again not really speak of is aviva so that's gone down 5.34 percent you know we know aviva recently declared that they're not going to be paying their dividend um and they've just been having you know multiple um headlines regarding pays and furloughs and bosses and nhs and claims and outlooks and so forth so again i don't think nothing notable that aviva's done this week there's obviously headlines around aviva um, but i just think that this is just a normal flow of at the moment a bearish sentiment towards the current stock at the moment the next stock that has fallen this week is virgin money now the interesting thing is that virgin money's gone down 7.59 percent this week Virgin Money specifically, there's not been any bad sentiment, but the Virgin Group this week has had a lot of negative sentiment. There's been a lot of criticism for Richard Branson um, wanting a loan to bail out Virgin businesses. He had to write this tweet, which was kind of like a letter to his employees that said seven facts about the business. You know, he was talking about how his net worth doesn't mean he's got that cash available, which I think most people do know that net worth isn't cash available, but potentially there's some people out there that think his four. 3 billion net worth means he can just go and with, withdraw 4.3 billion cash um, now he can't withdraw 4.3 billion cash I mean if he could in the ATM that would be fantastic but actually he technically can so even though his net worth doesn't mean this is cash available typically when you have such a vast net worth or when you have any form of a net worth you can you can get line of credit you can borrow against certain things and you could potentially borrow billions if you needed to borrow and i think he wanted a 500 million pound loan so i do understand why people are angry because they're saying you do have the ability to use 500 pounds of your own money to to bail out your businesses you know bail out your employees why are you needing taxpayer money particularly because you live in the british virgin islands you live in necker island and you haven't been paying tax for 14 years so i'm not going to get into it i don't really care either way personally speaking it's his issue with the, with you know the government and the british public i'm not really going to get in the middle of all of that it's it's way beyond me anyway but um but yeah that has been you know in the headlines a lot this week and i th I, I think that all of virgin businesses that are publicly floated um have had quite a lot of negative sentiment um this week because richard isn't going to be doing that but one thing he has said is he might put a mortgage up on necker island imagine putting a mortgage up on your island bro that's just a different that's a different level of it's just a different it's a different world we're not the same bro we're not the same but listen that's that's what's happening with 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 virgin and and i genuinely believe that you know we talk a lot on this channel about headlines and sentiment and panic and whatnot and and i genuinely feel that's kind of had a, a double effect for for virgin money or a bit of a halo effect shall i say the last top four lot to speak of is legal and general um legal and general went down 9.83 percent this week um one of the reasons that i believe it went down this week is because it went ex-div on the 23rd of april so after it's gone ex-div typically um the share price falls by the dividend amount the day after that's typically the behavior that happens uh, and because people start to see that actually they start to sell as well you're going to have the behavior of dividend flipping where people are buying trying to just to secure that dividend that next dividend payment and then they're going to sell later on some people might be in profit when they do that most people won't be if they buy just before and sell just after but anyway i do always see um a trend where straight after a dividend has is been um declared and uh, sorry the ex dividend date has passed for a declared dividend um the stock starts to fall a little bit as well now the other headline that's quite significant to legal and general's balance sheet which is their fundamentals which i believe then is also important is that they've also did an announcement um, where they where they've said that their assets under management so all of the assets that they they manage they total up to cash and they basically say or total up the value rather and say this is our assets under management it's actually gone down from 1.2 trillion to 1.14 trillion so it's about 60 billion um falling assets under management for a variety of reasons over across a variety of units um so i think that announcement sent the share price tumbling that day alone about 3.85 percent um and I think their guidance on their first quarter earnings is, is a bit lower than expected. So I think there's probably going to be a continued a continued rather negative trend on legal in general. Um, but again, for me personally, it's still at levels that I feel, you know, it's affordable and I want to continue to buy more shares into. But, you know, with everything down so much and with things rising as well, you know, it's, it becomes difficult to try and 
decide where to put your money towards and that's why potentially just dollar cost averaging across all your stocks might be the best option but you know I, I, I don't do things the easy way so that's partly it now the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is getting a hundred percent return so this is the first time I've ever received a hundred percent return on a particular stock and that's obviously Shopify as you can see on your screen so this week Shopify passed a um, hundred percent as a return I know some of you guys incidentally some of you new investors that started investing from this channel or either just genuinely you started investing and then you started supporting this channel and whatnot you guys have already see received a hundred percent investments um, for the likes of things like I think Boohoo or ASOS for the likes of Tesla when that went on that crazy Bull run and some of you guys were in 200 300 percent so you're probably thinking oh that's my indicator i've already done that but you know this is the first time i've personally done that and really and truly three questions come to mind i'm just the only there's three questions that i'm i'm, I'm thinking about when i see this 100 percent return um on a particular stock the first question is why didn't i put more at the beginning you know hindsight is always a wonderful thing you know i only have ever done one round of investing this was the first growth stock when i decided to change my strategy to be a bit more hybrid and include more growth stocks into my portfolio include more us stocks into my portfolio this was the first stock that i'd done that with um and i thought let me just put a thousand and just keep it keep it simple because i don't really know what's going to happen here so now in hindsight even after looking at all of the fundamentals headlines customers products and the future um, and believing in the business I just didn't read I didn't know it was going to do this obviously so I just put a thousand in thinking you know I'm just going to leave it there the second thing is just reinforcing why was I so aggressive with all of my other stocks so because I was so aggressive with some of my other stocks that haven't really yielded the return that they should have done or that I anticipated them for them to do um, for, for a number of reasons then I maxed out my ISA and because I maxed out my ISA allowance there were two more opportunities to get Shopify at levels that I bought it before so you guys saw that I got Shopify you know around the 28th of October right which was just about uh, here yeah so I, I bought Shopify on this day around you know this price range and you know you can basically see that there were pretty much two more opportunities to get it maybe not exactly that exact same amount but to get it roughly at the same valuation and then obviously saw the reason why I didn't invest at those two opportunities was that I couldn't invest and I couldn't invest because I maxed out my ISA. So that gave me another question of, you know, why was I so aggressive with certain other stocks when really and truly, if I wasn't so aggressive, I would have had the opportunity to, to put more money into a stock that I really saw had a good trend and I felt at this stage rather than this stage, it would have potentially, you know, come back to, to the levels that it should have been. And, um, now the third and final question is when will I sell? Like when is there a time to sell? I do say often in this channel that I'm gonna hold these stocks forever, I'm gonna hold it for a long time. Obviously forever is a very long time. I don't mean forever, forever, but I do mean like I'm a long-term investor. So obviously I'm not really thinking about quick flips or quick profit like any money I put into free trade is for the long term I don't need it in a short term I have no need for it in the next one year two years three years and whatnot so there's no need for me to, to sort of try and make a profit from this money immediately but then when I am seeing a hundred percent return I'm seeing look that's a thousand pound profit right there who knows what the future is going to hold maybe it is the right time to sell so I start looking at analyst reports um, and there's there's some analyst reports and from 23 analysts the ratings are nine of them are saying buy 13 of them are saying hold and one of them is saying actually it's the time to sell which is really interesting so then i think all right cool so if nine people are saying buy and 13 people are saying hold and one people saying sell what are the price targets what are the the the, the ranges of price targets between those analysts and interestingly enough, there's a high price target of $700, which is obviously not that much further from where it is today. Uh, an average price target of $490, which I would still obviously be in profit um, by, by a bit, maybe like 40%, something along those lines, potentially. Um, and then there is a low price target of $320, which I would literally be in about 5% loss if it ever went down there. And I don't believe it will um, potentially do that. Now, I do believe the world will potentially go into a global recession. That's just a prediction that I, I feel might happen. Um, and so the question then becomes, will you still hold it during a recession? And one thing that I know with Shopify specifically is that no two recessions are the same. Like this Corona recession, 
helped Shopify because people are locked down and they're deferring stuff to online resources in order to pay for goods and get certain things. So that actually benefited Shopify. Whereas a normal recession, people probably will reduce consumer spending across the board. And if they do that, then actually they're not going to be purchasing things on Shopify or through Shopify's network, etc. So actually, if, if that proper recession happens, which is a recession based off the economy and GDP, not a recession based off Corona and healthcare and whatnot, then actually Shopify stock might not perform as well as it is performing now in this current kind of healthcare recession, shall we say. So it's a very, very interesting time. Um, and I think if the economy dropped, the, the the percentage and the reason and all of that stuff will be will be you know so so different. So at this current moment, I've decided that I'm just going to hold this and see where it goes. Listen, if it goes down to like eighty percent, I'm not going to be worried that I didn't get a hundred percent when I sold it. If it goes down to sixty percent when there's a recession, but I think when a recession hits or when a recession is likely to potentially come, that might be the time when I might actually just you know what close this, take my profits sit that season out and then obviously when we're sort of at the bottom potentially buy back in again because i definitely believe in this stock as a amazon competitor i told you it's the third largest business in canada now um behind just two banks toronto dominion and rbc um, and shopify is a phenomenal business it's a business that i've got familiar experiences with on a on a personal consumer level as well so i really like the product i really like the business um, and I definitely just want to continue holding this investment. I would like to get the opportunity to buy some more, but I'm definitely not going to do so um, at these at these higher prices because you know what, it's just going to be a bit too crazy. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is a bit of the bleak sentiment in the market. So I'm taking a lot of this information from the Guardian. Um, let's look at the year view. Let's look at the year view. Who look at the year view and the month view? Let's look at the month view. And um. Basically, it, it talks about how a lot of these markets have basically been hit at this current moment. Um, and even with this this rise that you can see that's happened this month where things look like they're bouncing back, look like things are going to be positive, you know, beware, it could potentially be a bull trap because a lot of the, the fundamental indicators, a lot of the economic indicators are suggesting that actually the outlook globally and the outlook in the economy as a whole is really quite negative and so if those things become you know what well they are facts but let's say if those facts actually start to impact the stock market um, and impact the economy um, like properly I would say then um, then actually you know we're potentially going to see my portfolio your portfolio whoever's continue to kind of go on this downward trend and start to, to, to converge and, and, and go in the wrong direction. So on The Guardian, it basically says, finally, European stock markets have all closed lower tonight as investors continue to worry about the scale of the COVID-19 lockdown, um, which is interesting. A late flurry of selling has sent all the indices deeper into the red with the stock 600 losing 1.3% today, leaving it down 1.2% for the week. Here's the damage. FTSE 100 down 75 points at 575. Two German DAX down 177 points or 1.7% at 10 point sorry 10,336 French CAC down 57 points or 1.3% at 4393. There are plenty of reasons for pessimism today, including that UK retail sales fell at their fastest ever monthly pace in March, which is obviously significant. I personally think that was expected, but the markets are seeming, seemingly responding to that. German business confidence has hit a record low. Um, Germany being obviously the biggest economy in Europe um, and obviously they're having potentially business confidence. And it's interesting because there's a lot of positive sentiment about Germany and, and the way they've handled the COVID situation, getting testing out, getting masks out, getting healthcare out to people um, and having a solid economy that's actually helped, you know, their entire uh, population. But even so, it's still having a negative impact on their market, which is which is quite interesting. U.S. durable goods orders have tanked due to a slump in aircraft demand. So there's been, you know, businesses that probably do durable goods, such as like Lockheed Martin and, and other kind of industrial businesses. Um, their orders have tanked um, and a lot of it's due to the to the to the to the aircraft demand, probably other things as well. But I think the aircraft demand is obviously going to have a major part to play for everyone because I just don't think the travel industry is really going to bounce back for quite some time. And US consumer confidence has dropped sharply as well. And with Gatwick Airport warning that travel won't fully recover for four years, interesting prediction, 
and bulging pay cuts at Burberry and JD Sports, the crisis has a long way to run. Traders are also disappointed by the overnight news that Gilead's Remdesivir drug did not perform well in its first trial. So you guys, do you remember I mentioned last week that the reason why the stock markets went up was due to this one company here called Gilead um, or Gilead. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I call it Gilead. And um, it went up. Um, over the last you know seven days of kind of this period here quite significantly because you know they announced that they're doing some trials at the University of Chicago 113 people were tested and you know those positive results it came out this week that actually the results weren't good and it had no impact so that's really interesting everyone invested because of that and then not everyone's selling because of the negative news this week as well so it's just basically been a bit of a topsy-turvy week I think you know ending it on Gilead's um, stock graph just basically signifies that you know I think each week a new story unfolds each week we're going to learn more um, and things are going to be are going to be different on a, on a case-by-case basis so you know if you're wondering what to do I always say stick with your strategy if you are down you know and you can and you have the opportunity to buy more buy more of businesses that you believe in over the long term um, and only you can determine you know which stocks they potentially are and um, reinvest you know your dividends or whatnot so that you're getting a return on, on money that is not your own um, invested capital um, and just sit through this period and you know I think this is still going to be one of the best learning periods and potentially one of the best money making opportunities when we look back you know five years down the line so yeah hopefully you found this video useful if you did like comment subscribe and I'll catch you next time with another investment video take care guys peace